Could your schoolroom use a change? Are your kids getting a little big and they need somewhere else to go? Could you use a better organization style so you can get to your lessons and things could flow? That was me. Stay tuned to figure out how we worked it out. Hi, I'm Kimberly and welcome back to my channel. It's only homeschooling. I'm a licensed professional counselor and former middle school counselor turned homeschool mom of one. So a little bit of my story. I decided to homeschool our son within the span of about a month. Long story short, he attended a private pre-K and a private kinder and I did enroll him in public school for first grade and then I panicked. Something just felt completely wrong about it. It didn't flow for us. It didn't feel right for us. So in the span of a month, and I don't recommend you do it this way, I grabbed as many materials as I could. I was able to attend one homeschool summit in person. And within the span of a month, I pulled everything together and decided to homeschool. I don't recommend you do it this way because I didn't have everything that I needed. And it's not that you needed a lot. It's just that there were some basics like proper seating and where to put him. So you're gonna see today in our video how we started with our homeschool, how it's changed a little bit over the years as our son has gotten bigger. And now what I feel is our current setup is the best for us for flow, for learning to where we're most comfortable. Truth be told, you don't need a, lots of, a lot of fancy equipment or a lot of fancy things or even a dedicated homeschool room to homeschool. In fact, during the pandemic, when my husband came home to work, we homeschooled at the kitchen table for, I'm guessing probably six months, at least half of that year, because my husband needed our what we have now as a dedicated homeschool room to work. So you don't need a lot of fancy things. Wherever you homeschool, you can make the space work for you. What we have now works great. So come on and let's take a look. So for starters, our homeschool room is upstairs and we pick a theme every single year. We, we dress up and decorate everything the night before our first day of school. It's just one of our back to homeschool traditions. Our first year we had Mary Poppins. Our second year we had Dr. Seuss. Our third year we had Super Mario. When our son was entering fourth grade, we did Pokemon. And this year we decided to go with Kirby. So this is the door where we have done all of the decorations. My husband's a big help when it comes to this. Just simple stuff, and it's just stuff that I had at home. I printed off a few things, and it's just some construction paper and leftover um, wrapping paper that I had on hand, and I just made a door out of it. Below. If you want Let's to see go inside and see what the schoolroom looks like. And this is our classroom. Okay, I'll try not to pan the camera too much. So here, close our door. You can see behind the door, we have something that is so important. My son has test anxiety, which goes along with it. So we're always reminding him, you are more than a test score. As a writer, as a therapist, as a mom, I love words and I love words of affirmation. So you are going to see lots of things that are affirming and uplifting all around my classroom or our classroom, I should say. Um, think deeply, speak gently, love much, laugh a lot, work hard, give freely and be kind. Words that we live by. And of course, my son is a little bit of a perfectionist, bless his heart. So we want to remind him there is progress, not perfection. And the only way to finish something is to start. So this is the door. When we first come in, we pan just a little bit, just behind the door. I bought these anchor charts our first year in, and they have been very helpful. Parts of speech. So we have those. We also have our board over here. And this is something new that I just added. You will see in the evolution of a schoolroom what I used to have up here. I will show you some pictures. I used to, when we were at home all the time before we became hybrid homeschoolers, I used to have two little empty picture frames up there and I would put his star work up there. 
but he got to the point where he was focused so much on getting either one or two wrong and he kind of let the cork spoil the wine. So I decided instead to paint our motto. I had a very dear friend who's more artistic than I am help me with some of these and my son helped me with some of these. But if you've listened to any of my podcasts or seen my videos or read any of my blog posts, you know this is one of our favorite mottos in our homeschool. Education is a journey, not a destination. So even though I'm not incredibly artistic, I did have someone who helped me. And this one, I'm going to redo it a little bit more, but this is more of relax. It's only homeschooling. But that is our motto. And as I pull back and show you our whiteboard, we also have a picture up here. This is a child that we support through Compassion International, one of our favorite charities. His name is Ephraim. He lives in Burkina Faso, and he ha shares my son's exact birthday. So we correspond with him, and we send letters back and forth, and we send gifts. And it's just been a wonderful relationship, an opportunity for our son to grow and have that relationship. Moving on down, I have, years ago, my mom... Uh, my late mom um, attend, went to the Holy Land with my oldest brother, and she brought this back for me. It's this beautiful placemat that I decided to put up this year. It's Miracles of Jesus in Galilee. So I put that up in a place of honor. Um, we also have our shredder and our pencil sharpener that we have here. And we use, we are not a classical conversations family, but I use a lot of the CC materials, especially in my mashup learning, which I will put a card up there if you're curious as to what is mashup learning. Um, so you can click on, but this is where I keep, we use these maps a lot. They're really great from CC. We like them because we can open them and we can um, learn our, our map skills so much more easy when we're learning our geography and they also get a blank one so that we can kind of, it's fun to see how many of the countries you can remember. And it's been really helpful for mama. So this is where I store our maps. This year we are actually going to be studying the U.S. So I'm leaving that one first uh, front and center. This is our periodic table. We did chemistry a few years ago at home, but we're going to circle right back around to it in our classical learning style. So I put this fun, really nice mat that I got from, I believe it's, it was either Hobby Lobby. Yes, it was Hobby Lobby. So that's where I found that. And this, I actually just found this great little cover. I just found in the dollar bin at Target. This is our morning basket. Now this is gonna vary what I have in here. As for right now, I just have this really fun Bible that I got from Christian Book, the Bible made easy for my son. I actually got this for him a couple of years ago when he went to Bible camp, day camp in the summer. And this is one of the current devotionals that we use at home right now. Now, when he attends, um, we are hybrid homeschoolers, and when he attends school on campus, um, they are using BJU's, um, I believe it is, the fullness of time is what they're doing this year in fifth grade. Okay. So panning a little bit over, this is one of my favorite signs that I had my husband hang up there for me, and it is one we reference often. We live by grace and not perfection. I reference that for myself and I reference that for my son quite a bit. This is just a separate bathroom that goes into a Jack and Jill bath. This is where I store a lot of my son's artwork. If it's too big to put up anywhere else, but I just, I'm a little bit of a pack rat and I just couldn't stand to get rid of it. So that is where I put it up there. There's also some scrolls where he has done some of his own artwork at the top. This is one of the bookshelves we have in the room. At the top, I haven't had a chance to label all of these yet, but this is where I keep my art materials and some curriculum that I've not gone through yet, um, quite yet. This is a talk box mom Spanish that we are going to go through very soon. Oh, here's something that I can put in the morning basket. It's a basket that I forgot all about. Yeah, I did put those there. We are still working our way through the Tuttle Twin series, so I will put this down here as well. That's something he can have in his morning basket. But back to my bookshelf. Okay. These are all parenting books, and these are the books that I'm going to actually make a video for you later on, so I can tell you some of my favorite books that I use for emotional regulation and for parenting a child with sensory processing disorder or with dyspraxia or with emotional regulation challenges. If you would like to know more about that video or if you would like to see a video like that, please let me know in the comment section below. 
Here I have organized, these are some of my favorite picture books that I'm setting aside. Um, I'm gonna do a short video on that. And these, you're gonna see a video on this coming very soon. These are our read alouds that I've got organized for this year. So I'm gonna go through all of those and tell you a little bit about all the fun read alouds that we are doing this year. Now, since my son is a hybrid homeschooler, we trade his curricula back and forth. We take his materials with us back and forth between the University Model Brick and Mortar School and our school here at home. So this is where I'm keeping some of my teacher's editions. It wasn't necessary for me to buy many teacher's editions this year, but math is one that I definitely, definitely wanted to buy because it is just not a strength for me. This is the rest of his school supplies that and I'm going to be sending these to school with him. And then, like I said, some will stay on campus and we'll go in a notebook there and some will come back home with me. So for now, this is where I am keeping these, these supplies. On the bottom, this is where I keep more curricula. This is the story of the world, which even though we use Veritas Press cards right now, I like Jim White. Jim Rice could read, Jim Wise could read me stereo instructions and I would listen to it and be just happy as a lark. So I keep those around because I also have the audiobooks. But here is also where I keep my Veritas Press timeline cards. This year we are studying um, 1815 to the present. And I'll show you how I put those together. I bought the other sets of cards. Then I'll show you how I put the rest of those together. And these are just more of activity manuals that the school provides us. So that is my curricula bookshelf. Just to the right of that bookshelf, you're going to see me, <laughs> a full length mirror. And you might be wondering, why is there a full length mirror in your classroom? Well, I actually have a good reason. It is for this sign right here. This is a very important sign and we use this as part of like our heavy works. It's brain breaks, have you crossed midline today? If you have a child who struggles with proprioceptive or vestibular or sensory integration dysfunction or dyspraxia along the way, crossing midline may, several times a day and making sure to include plenty of heavy work activities, which I'll do more videos on those as well. Things like jumping and anything that's push, pull, lift, carry, anything like that actually helps get them ready to do their classwork. It's one of the biggest reasons that we homeschool and why we love our hybrid homeschool program. It's super important for kiddos to be able to get their bodies moving. They're not meant to sit at a desk for eight hours a day. Me either. Movement matters and it matters greatly when you're impacting academics. So let's open the door. That's why, oh, the mirror, but why do we have the mirror here? The mirror we have because it helps him see where his body is in space so that he can learn how to cross midline properly and so he can execute some proper OT and PT exercise skills right here in the classroom. Let's go inside and let me show you my supply closet. Okay, this is a labor of love for my husband that he helped me this year organize this and put it back together. I have this filing cabinet. You do not need a filing cabinet. I had this left over from my private practice days. What I keep in there are his, if you've seen me put together his, um, our portfolios or our records from one school year to the next, they are quite large. In fact, let me show you. <laughs> yes, really, really thick files from one year to the next because I'm a bit of a pack rat and I keep everything and it is certainly not a requirement for you to do so but I figure why not repurpose this really expensive piece of equipment that I had and just use it for our needs here. So that's where I keep my records. It's also where I keep a lot of writing. It's also where I keep some additional supplies and some other records. For here, um, when we, we use Cursive Without Tears and the, I bought these um, anchor charts to put up here and they've just been super, super helpful for keeping things organized. If he just wants to glance really quickly, he can kind of just stick his head in here around the corner from his desk and see, uh, remind himself how to form a specific letter. 
I also learned about this wonderful little cart from, I'm blanking on her name, I'm sorry, but her, her channel is Who Let the Kids Out? And I took this idea from her, so thank you so much. I will put your name and a link to the video where you organized your homeschool room this way in the comment section below because I'm just drawing a blank on your name right now. I apologize. But this is where we have organized everything so that since we homeschool three days a week and two days a week on campus, this way I can easily transfer his assignments from his book bag, which is this is where I store it when he comes in here so it's not scattered everywhere. Um, from his book bag down to each subject. And then this is also where I keep additional school supplies and manipulatives. We still like to just play or hang on to the man, uh, manipulatives that we have. Find motor toys, which also you're gonna find a lot of fidgets in there. Crayons, markers, craft supplies. So that is one wall. And here is where I keep a lot of journals. Most of these on the bottom are empty. These two on the top are ones that he's currently working on, his independent writing projects. Now here is where I keep, we have a lot, of, we have a book club, Books and Bricks Book Club. So this, these are some of my son's creations and he just didn't want to take them apart, which I completely understand that he put a lot of work into it. So I've put them up in a place of honor here on the bookshelf. Up top, you can see some of our class rules our class values, and more anchor charts, this time for punctuation, which is very useful. Um, plenty of world maps. He did this his first year of homeschool with, um, it was just a Kiwi Crate kit, but it was so much fun and I hate to get rid of it because he worked so very hard on it and it really helped us find motor skills. And here's a giant US map. Of course, we're studying that this year and a large map of Jerusalem that my mom brought back. Whoops, whatever I knocked over behind me, I'll pick up in a minute. And this, of course, is something that is absolutely wonderful. My brother-in-law shared this with me years ago. He does this every morning with, his, with my nieces, his daughters, and it is his I Ams. It's a set of positive informations that are biblically based. If you would like to learn more about the I Ams or if you'd like me to post an article about them, I will be happy to do so. Just let me know in the comments section below. Okay, so moving on to bookshelves. We have some headphone stands up here. You will see some future videos coming out for me very soon. Um, these are some special modulated listening headphones for modulated music. They're for my son. He uses therapeutic listening from Vital Links in conjunction with our occupational therapist, and it works wonders. Um, I will put some information about Vital Links in the comment section below for you or in the description box below, and you can ask me questions about it. And those are more of, those are mommy's headphones, actually. That's why I, I know where they are, because I'm always looking for things. This is our bookshelf, and this year I finally got it organized somewhat. Sometimes I over-organize things to the point where I'm like, gee, that made sense at the time. But we love books in our house. So you can just see all the different types of books by subject. And games. We are not as big game schoolers as some other homeschoolers are, but we certainly do make use of it. And these are just a few of our favorites. I do have a video on these for helping with emotional regulation and brain breaks. Find to Seek is a really fun one. Also, don't go bananas. We love don't go bananas. We also have some educational games. This is a new one I just got this year since we're learning U.S. geography. I can't wait for that one. Here is a very useful tool. I put it up here with the games. I will do a video on this if you're interested too. We bought this a couple of years ago and it has been wonderful. It's a digital version of flashcards basically from Math Shark, but it's much easier to use in the car when you're car schooling than to worry about dropping flashcards everywhere. We also have a logic section. We are big Tuttle Twins fans, but we're not quite old enough for these books yet. Can't wait for a few more years until we are. Our Socratic soccer ball. Um, I really want to get to a video on that sometime when I get a chance. Um, here's our mind challenge games. Those are the Tuttle Twins books we've already read. And then here's our 
Bible Picks. This is our current apologetics that we're going through right now. And I can't wait to make a video on that as well. More Bible resources. The devotionals that we've gone through. And the first devotional that we did, the Children's Storybook Bible. Science, we do love the Who Was and What Was series. And even though we have not used Apologia for two years, we still just love it. And we pull it out occasionally. We just want to do a fun, hands-on science experiment. We are big Apologia fans. Lots of geography resources, especially ones on U.S. geography. And then I have a reference section at the bottom where I have a thesaurus and dictionary and then all sorts of encyclopedias for various topics. Okay. So that is our supply closet. Okay, so back out here now in the main room, I'll show you where we do our work. This is my son's first year as a fifth grader. Yes, I have a fifth grader. I can't believe it. And behind there, we have some fun little tools that we keep. He has an easy button that he actually wanted years ago when things were, when things were challenging for him. You would be able to say that. But we have started using with him the pause button. Yes. And that is actually his voice that we recorded for that. For when he gets frustrated to teach him how to pause in the moment and find a grounding activity. That just because something is hard doesn't mean it's impossible. This is a tea style desk that we purchased. And we actually put this together last year. It has great storage because as he's gotten older and gotten bigger, I will show you or you will see here through the video. The evolution of how our homeschool room has changed over the years. It used to be mama just had a desk over here and he had his little airplane desk over here. And then it grew to this tiny little desk that we got for him that really did not fit properly. But finally this past year, I feel like we have gotten to something that works really well. So if you, if you watch a lot of my videos, you recognize this view. This is the view of my chair, from my chair at this desk where I sit and I do a lot of my interviews and I do a lot of videos because it's just very comfortable and it's a good use of the space. So this is the view from my chair at the tea desk. But this really helps so I can sit here at my desk and work on my computer. He can also do some of his online work over there on his computer. And if he has a question, we can just very easily come together right here in the middle and work together. This is just cute. He just painted this for me this summer. Mama Llama. What do we keep in there? Treasure. Chewing gum. Chewing on something which I'm grateful to have chewing gum around so it's not pencils plus a sweetheart or anything else that he finds because he's an oral sensory seeker, helps us work. And the beauty of being a homeschool family is we can have chewing gum if we want it. So let's swivel back around from the door to my bookshelves <laughs> filled with all sorts of books. <sighs> Something that I just truly love. Books truly are a love language for me. But my favorite part is right up here at the top. Here are our flags where we do our morning pledges, but also it is where I keep my son's artwork. Yes, I'm a bit of a pack rat, but more than anything, if he made it, I treasure it. And so, oh, there's pictures of me when I was little. Um, I just adore it. So this is probably one of my favorite parts in the room, this bookshelf simply because it stores my treasures, all of my treasures that my baby made. Over here in the corner, I have, oh, I see our mascot, Ollie Only. He is our owl, and he does love its only homeschooling. And this is a new section. This is where I used to keep my filing cabinet, but it just looked awful in the back of videos for when I would chat with people. So I moved it out of the way and I just repurposed several items that I have around my house. This shelf that I had in a closet for, I don't know how long I happened to find. I'm like, Ooh, hooray. So I put that up there. And this, this section is probably my second favorite in the room simply because it's very personal, deeply personal to me. Um, the Lord's prayer that is up there. My mom brought that back with her from my late mom when she returned from Jerusalem. The teacup is a family heirloom from my husband's late grandmother or great grandmother. I can't remember. 
um, blessed. It's a little box my friend, a friend gave to me, a friend from church. And then this is actually an old piece of occupied Japan. It's an ashtray, but we don't smoke. So I just use it as a nice decorative piece. It was from my late stepfather. And you might be wondering why in the vase I have cotton up there and not a flower. Well, my hometown is famous for a bug. We were in the, uh, I think it was Ripley's Believe It or Not, for having a boll weevil, a monument to a bug. We have it in the middle of our town square, down in Enterprise, Alabama, we have a monument to a bug, to the boll weevil. And there is a story behind it. I'll put a link in the description box below so you can learn why my hometown has a monument to a bug, but it endears me. It actually inspired us to grow peanuts where I'm from because the boll weevil kept eating the cotton. And why do I have cotton instead of peanuts? Well, truth be told, I chose cotton instead of peanuts because cotton is the reminder that even if we go through hardship, that God is always on the throne and there's always a way through. And sometimes when we have trials, we don't recognize the beauty on the other side of that. It's all grist for the mill and count it all, count it all blessings, count it all joy. So the cotton led to great prosperity when the Bowie will actually ate that because they started farming peanuts instead. I want to put a link so you can learn about my hometown in the description box below. Okay, so the, I do have my diplomas on the wall just because, well, they were really expensive pieces of paper, so why not? They're not in my practice anymore because I don't have one, so I hung them on the wall. Why not? Um, the butter churn, believe it or not, I know it's a bit of hodgepodge, but that was from my great-grandmother on my father's side. So I put it in there because I like anything that reminds me of family. There is no greater treasure just like these Jesus statues and the Jesus picture here of our Savior and the doves in the book. Um, the book in the middle was a gift from my mother-in-law, my sweet, sweet mother-in-law. And the doves and the Jesus statues and the Jesus plate were from my late mom's home. So I always have them with me. On the walls, I have some quotes from two favorite writers, Sylvia Plath and um, E.E. E. Cummings. And I have a couch. This was just a really comfy couch. And when I closed my practice down, I didn't want to get rid of it. And it's so nice to just be able to curl up on it when you want to do our reading, or sometimes I'll grab a blanket and hop up there and snuggle with my dog or snuggle with my son. Or when the house is really quiet in the morning before the boys get up, I'll come up here with a cup of coffee and do my Bible study and just kind of center myself and get ready for my day. Painting around a little bit to the left. These are, I'm going to climb up on my couch now because it's really comfy. These are a set of wonderful paintings based on Charlotte Mason. They're watercolor based on Charlotte Mason phrases. I purchased these from a wonderful artist on Etsy. Forgive me, I'm terrible with names, but what I will do is go back to Etsy and I will put a link in the description box below from the artist. She is a homeschool mama in Savannah, Georgia, and these were just gorgeous. So I just had to have them as a treat for me and they were, were relatively inexpensive considering how much time she put into that. So then painting over here, uh, again, more of my son's artwork that I just can't stand to get rid of. So I hung this bit of rope here from just something I found at Dollar Tree. Um, and instead of hanging it in kind of a swing pattern, I just hung it straight down with some clothespins so I can fit more of his artwork there. I just treasure it. So I want to keep it. Kids grow, needs change. You learn something new every year. So I feel like this year we have found a pretty good setup. Please know that you don't need a dedicated homeschool room. You can homeschool wherever you are. We homeschool all over the house, actually, sometimes outside, sometimes on the couch, sometimes at the kitchen table, and oftentimes in the car if we're on the go in between activities. But you do not need a dedicated homeschool room. And just know that my homeschool room does not look like this. This is so nice and clean right now. I really wish it would stay that way, but life happens. That's okay. <laughs> 